I'm not even going to introduce myself to this, to be honest, who cares? <laughs> Many years ago, I went through a crisis. I can't even call it a midlife crisis because I'm not that old. Yes. But for me as a teenager, it was a crisis. Now, I got a wonderful text message from my auntie, loving text message, full of compassion, kindness, sprinkled in with a little bit of advice and phrases like, when I was your age, and then she definitely put in a whole bunch of advice to fix my current crisis. But throughout this text message was the abbreviation L-O-L. LOL. Laugh out loud. I've used this abbreviation all the time in social media, talking to my friends. Hey Brad, look at this, lol. But here I am, in my room, crying with a crisis. And my auntie's laughing out loud at me. My rest, the message read something like this. Sven, I am deeply sorry, blah, 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 lol. This too shall pass, blah, 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 lol. I think you should do, blah, 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 lol. Good luck, lol. <laughs> My kind, generous, compassionate auntie is laughing at me. Now, months later, I actually confronted her about this. And I said, what was going on? Why are you laughing at me? And she looked at me, stone cold, shocked. She said, I'm, I'm so sorry. I thought L-O-L stood for lots of <laughs> Now, I mentioned this this morning. Maybe just to, for myself, to really remind myself of the theme of today's session. In a digital age where global communication is at our fingertips, how is it possible that we miscommunicate? We miss the mark. We misunderstand each other. How do we as parents cross that generational gap and learn to speak the digital language of our children and that of the times in which we find ourselves? Now this morning, I'm here just to present one, one possible solution. And that is one that works, one that I've encountered, one that I'm a part of and proud to be a part of because I've experienced it. And that is I-15's family enrichment. Now I know you see the little leaflet and you see the little stamp and the little leaf and you're like, but what is I-15? Quite simply, non-governmental, independent, non-profit federation, and here's the key, whose primary mission is to support families through training. How do they support families? Quite simply, through the formation of parents and youth. By providing courses that are target groups of parents and grandparents with children of the same age and are focused on acquiring appropriate skills for that stage of development. And this is done by using the case study method. But I encourage you to go online Look up at some of the courses because they have a whole bunch of courses and programs for parents that literally range all the way from zero to 16. But there are two. There are two that I'd like to highlight. One is called the personal project. That is when our adolescents leave the home, etc., and they start their adulthood lives, they're going to be faced with big decisions. They're going to have to make challenging choices. And some of the topics covered in this program are professional vocation, dating, marriage, the meaning of life. I mean, Mohammed, you had mentioned earlier that young married couples are unclear about the expectations going into marriage, either of themselves, of their spouse, or marriage as a whole. Now, here would be a great opportunity for young people to start that conversation. Another course is for grandparents. And I just took one topic of that course, which is grandparents and intergenerational relations. Wow. Now, in 2019, IFFD, which was going through their digital transformation, by placing all of their courses online due to the pandemic, my wife and I were very lucky to be part of the first ever international program of one of their courses called First Steps. This is a program for parents or couples planning to become parents or parents with children from the age of zero to three. We joined couples from around the world. We got to discuss our problems and our solutions. And what bowled us over was that our problems were pretty much the same. Whether we were in Paris or Nairobi, take people from Malaysia or Ireland or South Africa. Parenting in some way was universal. I have to say it was a hopeful experience for me. Because here I was witnessing week in, week out, parents who were willing to be involved, who were intentional, 
who wanted their children not just to survive, but to thrive. Now, IFFD, Family Enrichment, is an exceptional tool. It is comprehensive and inclusive. Now, by being an actor, I give motivational talks around South Africa. I've been doing this for almost over a decade now. Predominantly to adolescents, so teenagers, 13 to 19 years old. And in these last 10 years, I've noticed a trend. Teenagers today are more and more unhappy. They are disconnected, anxious. They have more connections now than ever before, more acquaintances now than ever before. Very few friends. Now my wife and I, we realized if we wanted our four children to thrive, we would have to be intentional. We'd have to put in the work. But more importantly, we knew we needed help. Nikki, you had said on day one, I don't know if you remember this, but you said that marriage is built on relationships. Relationships can only be formed by spending time together, getting to know each other, and now is the time to have those resources, resources available to build relationships, to kickstart that conversation between couples. Now, IFFD is currently working in almost over 70 countries, over five continents, with over 7,000 volunteers. I don't know where Lefocco has gone, but he said an incredible thing. He said, he talked about the human capital. The human capital has the power to change things, to change all things. And IFD is made up of people who are passionate, people who are prepared to get involved because it is their vocation to help families. No offense, it is not policy makers, it is not lecturers. Although those things are good and needed and have a place, it is parents helping parents because they understand the worth, the value, and the need of such a thing. Now I want to end with a story. Back in the 1990s, there was a public health researcher by the name of Stephen Luby. He worked in Pakistan. And he reduced diarrhea, pneumonia, skin infections by an alarming rate. What was his secret? Nice soap. That's right, his secret was nice soap. He knew that hand washing, basic sanitization, were essential to reducing illness. Well, the locals understood this too, but they weren't applying their knowledge, making it a habit. And you and I are both victims of this. We know we need to eat the broccoli, but we just would rather have the chocolate. We know these things about ourselves, but we don't make them a habit. Everything changed when Louis added incredible premium soap overnight. For free. Now, all of a sudden, locals were flocking to wash their hands because it felt good. Luxurious soap, it frothed nice, it smelled nice, it was a pleasing experience. Ladies and gentlemen, if I asked you next week, Thursday night, 8.30 p.m., you and your spouse, at the end of the day, and after all the stresses, the worries, the fears, the anxieties, the joys, you need to sit down for an hour and talk about your marital and parental problems, you go up for the hills. There's not a chance, we've turned on Netflix to his team this game. My whole point is this, IFFD family enrichment is that so. It is fun, it is exciting, it's non-threatening, it's inclusive, enjoyable, whilst, whilst still being incredibly effective at tackling these hard issues without forcing an agenda. So Guy, you mentioned the psychology, this new thing, positive, promoting positive psychology use a wonderful word, focusing on human flourishing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here is but one, one small but effective practice that promotes the flourishing of human families. That is IFFD's family enrichment.